Hey, it's Corey. I'm doing this intro because Aaron tried recording it a bunch of times and ended up turning it into a story of its own instead of an intro, so I had to step in. Today, we are re-airing one of Aaron's most popular stories called Field of Dreams. It's about the intersection of that movie and one of Aaron's favorite memories of a baseball game with his dad. But we're re-airing this for a reason. It's going to be a primer for next week's episode featuring 7 Minutes with Jay Crawford. Jay is formerly of ESPN and is now back near us in his native Ohio, working for Cleveland's NBC affiliate WKYC. Next week, you'll hear Jay share a story about his father in Cleveland baseball. All I can say is it's really heartfelt and you won't want to miss it. One last thing, and this is something Aaron insisted I do. When he originally told the story you're about to hear, he made a minor statistical error. When he says Grand Slam, it was actually a base hit. But the result was the same, and the story is delightful. Please enjoy Field of Dreams. The night before we went to see the Cleveland Indians play baseball, my dad said, you have to watch this movie called Field of Dreams. I know you probably watched it when you were a kid, he said, but now you're coming of age. I was almost 15 years old, and he said, there's a meaning in it that as you grow up and become a man, that you're going to understand. And so I did. I watched the movie and I was inspired by it. I loved it. I didn't know exactly what he was talking about. But what I did know was how fired up I was that the next day, just me and my dad, we were going to go see the Cleveland Indians play baseball on a school night. Now, the 1995 Cleveland Indians were a powerhouse of a team, incredible team. They were winning. The team had just moved into a new stadium recently. The conditions were right for an incredible evening. And I remember it like it was just yesterday, uh, finding my glove, putting my baseball cap on, my glove so I can catch foul balls, and getting in the car with my dad as he drove us north on Interstate 71, about 20 minutes uh, to Cleveland. And we parked the car a couple blocks away. My dad just handed over the money and we start walking and become part of this living crowd. It was like a voyage to Mecca. And we navigated our way through the downtown streets up to this beautiful stadium. You could see the the lights and the manicured grass and the seats filling up. It was going to be a sold out night. And you could hear the sounds and the laughing of the uh, of the kids and and families and the excitement in the air. And I remember standing in line with my dad and he said, don't forget your ticket stub. Always keep it so you remember this night. And we walked in through the gates and we found our seats. It was like a stadium for the common people because there were no bad seats in the stadium. And we were in the bleachers and we were sitting there. And from the beginning of the game, from the national anthem to the first inning, my dad walked me through this experience. He told me about balls and strikes and he told me about how to steal and when to swing and pitcher strategy. And he even explained what a balk was. I had no idea what that was. And he He walked me through what it was like for him coming downtown as a kid and watching these games. And now we're watching the Cleveland Indians. And by the way, I had my little program that he bought me. I knew all of the Indians. I mean, Omar Vizquel, Carlos Baerga, Kenny Lofton, my favorite, uh, Albert Bell, Paul Sorrento, Dennis Martinez, Oral Hershiser. I mean, the list went on. And I just remember looking at their profiles when they came up to bat and the innings passed. And you could just hear the sounds in the stadium. Cracker Jacks, peanuts, hot dogs, beer guy. And the Indians were in a back and forth game. It was an incredible game and I'm cheering for them. And we get to the the seventh inning stretch and stand up with my dad and we're singing, take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Everybody joins in. My There's goosebumps on my arm. Uh, buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jack. I don't care if I never get back let me root 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 for the home team if they don't win it's a shame and the whole crowd together four is one two three strikes you're out at the old ball game and as the game got later the indians were tied up and it ended up going extra innings it was incredible it was like the 13th inning and my dad was like maybe we should go home i said please dad don't let's not go home let's stay And in the bottom of the 13th inning, the bases were loaded and Kenny Lofton was up to bat. He was not a power hitter and he was down 0-2 in the count. And the pitcher threw a meatball over the plate and Kenny Lofton turned and crack and the ball flew out of the stadium. It was a grand slam to win the game. It was a walk-off and everyone's chair were like, yeah, yeah, my God, we're hugging each other. And there's peanuts and popcorn 
flying in the air and my dad's high-fiving people and hugging people. And I turn to my dad and I high-five him and he smiles at me and I hug my dad. I hug my dad and we walk out with the rest of the fans out to the cars to drive back home. And as my dad drove us out of the city, down the highway towards home, I felt as if I had one of the most magical nights of my life. And I leaned my head against the car window as we passed all the street lamps on the highway and their light bent in through the car. And it was like I was hit by lightning. I remembered so clearly this speech that I saw in the movie Field of Dreams that my father made me watch the night before. And it was the speech delivered by James Earl Jones, the actor. He played a character named Terrence Mann. And Terrence Mann is talking to another character, Ray Kinsella, played by Kevin Costner. And Terrence Mann, in this speech, is trying to talk about the potential of this baseball field that Ray has built in the middle of Iowa. And the speech on this drive home not only clicked, but I understood exactly what it meant. And Terrence Mann says to Ray, he says, Ray, people will come, Ray. They'll come to Iowa for reasons they can't even fathom. They'll turn up your driveway not knowing for sure why they're doing it. They'll arrive at your door as innocent as children, longing for the past. Of course we don't mind if you look around, you'll say. It's only $20 per person. And they'll pass over the money without even thinking about it, for it is money they have and peace they lack. And they'll walk out to the bleachers and sit in shirt sleeves on a perfect afternoon, and they'll find they have reserved seats somewhere along one of the baselines where they sat where they were children and cheered their heroes. And they'll watch the game, and it'll be as if they've dipped themselves in magic waters. The memories will be so thick They'll have to brush them away from their faces. People will come, Ray. The one constant through all the years, Ray, has been baseball. America has rolled by like an army of steamrollers. It's been erased like a blackboard, rebuilt, and erased again. But baseball has marked the time. This field, this game, it's a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that was once good and could be good again. Oh, people will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. And just as that last line went through my head, we pulled into my driveway and my dad parked the car and the Lights from the, the floodlight and the, and the garage light kind of illuminated the entire driveway. And I was inspired. I didn't want to go to sleep. And I was holding the glove that I had taken to the game. Um, and I got out of the car. And my dad got out of the car at the same time. And as he was about to go inside, I looked at him. And I just said something that came to mind. I said, hey, dad, you want to have a catch? And he looked at me as if he had seen a ghost. And he smiled. Seven Minute Stories is created and performed by Aaron Califato. Audio production by Ken Went. You can connect with Ken at media216.com. Original artwork done by Pete Whitehead. See Pete's work at PeteWhitehead.com. And lastly, I'm Corey Burse, and I coordinate the podcast. Make sure and tune in next week for another story.